Over the course of a packed and highly successful career, Teresa Elliott has followed her passion for food in the corporate environment and as a business owner and freelancer. Many of us would find the idea of starting over from scratch quite terrifying, but Teresa has thrived on the pressure. Travel has formed a big part of her life and she was fascinated by Middle Eastern cuisine, which is the theme of her menu for today. Encompassing an area that includes the Emirates, Egypt and Turkey, the Middle East has been the bridge between Africa, Asia and Europe for millennia. And the cuisine reflects its multicultural heritage. This is why Teresa finds it so inspiring. When I think of the Middle East, the little girl in me immediately thinks of tigers, magic carpet rides and talking parrots. Okay, I basically think about Aladdin. I may not have a genie in a bottle, but I do have a genie in the kitchen. Today, Teresa Elliott will be transporting us to the Middle East. Teresa, it is so wonderful to have you on Mele again. Thanks for having me. What are we cooking today? We're doing a three-course Middle Eastern menu today. It's going to be absolutely delicious. We're starting with some hummus and then some Egyptian dukkah served with pita breads and olive oil. Then we're moving on to a lamb lach majun, which is a Turkish pizza with lots of spices and vegetables. And then for dessert, we're having a lemon loaf cake with saffron syrup. I am so looking forward to everything you just <laughs> described. Where do we begin? Let's start with our pizza dough. We've got our flour here. I'm going to add a teaspoon of sugar and a pinch of salt. And then we're going to add our dry yeast straight into the flour. And give that a little mix just to make sure that everything is evenly combined. Next, I'm going to add a drizzle of olive oil. So that should do it. And then I've got about a cup of warm water here. Don't add it all at once, add most of it. And then we're going to mix. Teresa, can you use flour alternatives? Absolutely, spelt flour works really well, buckwheat as well, but whatever your favorite is, you can use. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to the dough. dough is ready. How do you know when it's ready? The way you'll know is that the dough will be very soft and it'll be stretchy. You should be able to stretch it without it breaking. So what I'm going to do is drizzle a little bit of olive oil into my bowl, pop your dough into the bowl, cover it and then leave it in a warm place for an hour or so until the dough doubles in size. So while the dough is rising let's get started on our hummus. Would you like to pass me the blender? Of course. This is a very simple recipe. We're going to start off with some chickpeas and then we're going to add some olive oil, a clove of garlic, some tahini, and some lemon juice, some cumin, this is one of my favorite spices, and of course a pinch of salt. All we need to do is blend it together. And that's all done, easy as that. Could you please pass me that bowl? Yes. My favorite thing in hummus is always that little kick of garlic. Yes. You have to have it. Absolutely have to have it. So that's looking lovely and smooth. That's all ready. I'm going to pop it in the fridge and then we can make our Egyptian dukkah. Super. Also a very easy recipe and we're going to start by toasting our nuts. I've got some raw almonds here along with some hazelnuts. And you're going to toast those for a couple of minutes until they start to turn golden and they smell fragrant. Does baking have to be scientific or can you be experimental and improvisational? Definitely more of a science. The type of ingredients that you add and the quantities have a big effect on your final product. So always use a good recipe. I say it's always great to play around, but you have to be a bit more careful with baking. So can you smell the aroma of the nuts? Yeah. They're toasting beautifully. And so I'm going to add my sesame seeds now. And I'm using a mixture of white and black sesame seeds. They don't take very long to toast, about a minute, and then we'll take them off the heat. Why do you toast them? So this really brings out the flavor. Sesame seeds in particular have quite a nutty flavor once you toast them, and it just adds to the end product. Our nuts and seeds are all toasted, so we can take that off the heat and we're going to need a food processor for the next step. Well, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Fancy finding a food processor in your kitchen. <laughs> Pour the nuts and seeds into the food processor. There we go. And then we're going to add our spices. So, of course, there's cumin. I'm going to add some ground coriander and then last of all, some salt. All into the blender and then we chop. So I 
like to leave my dukkha a little bit coarse, it's all done. Oh, the spices are coming through so beautifully. And it's going to be delicious. So let's pop it into our serving bowl and that's all ready for later. What's next? Our pizza dough is just about ready. Let's make the topping for the pizza. We're going to be making a lamb topping. There's lots of beautiful fresh ingredients. So we're going to start with our lamb mince. Add some chopped up red pepper and red onion. I've got some tomato that I've chopped up here as well. Some salt and pepper, cumin, <laughs> of course. Some garlic, paprika. Now I'm using smoked paprika for this recipe. I've got some tomato paste here and some fresh parsley. I always find it easier to mix it with my hands and just make sure that everything is well combined. The last thing we're going to add is a drizzle of olive oil into the bowl. So we've added some olive oil to the mix for a little bit of flavor and to help everything cohere and that's done. Let's check on our dough. That dough is puffed up and ready to go. Very important, don't forget to dust your work surface with a bit of flour and then we can start rolling. So I've knocked the dough down a little bit, so some of the air has come out. Put that on your flour, and then you start rolling. So with this kind of pizza, I tend to go for more of a rectangular shape rather than a circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it can be quite rustic. What inspires you to create new recipes? Well, I find that there's inspiration everywhere. When I look at recipe books, when I eat out, my brain is constantly thinking of new ideas and there's always something new that I want to try. So that looks nice and thin. So I've lined my baking tray with some baking paper. You can carefully put the dough on there. I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. Well, this isn't your traditional pizza, because there's no cheese on this one. So now it's time to add the topping. So I put a little bit of that on, and then you want to spread it into a very thin layer. And again, I find it easier actually just for the last little bit to use your hands and spread it all the way to the edges. You can leave a little border around the edge. This is ready for the oven. Teresa, this is my favorite part of any meal. Dessert, I'm with you there. How do we start? <laughs> Let's make our cake. We're gonna start with some eggs. Pop them into your bowl, add your caster sugar. And you're going to whisk this for a couple of minutes until it's thick and pale and creamy. Right, that's all done. Can I ask you a favor? Of course. Could you zest some lemon for me? And in the meantime, I'm going to add some fresh lemon juice and some vanilla extract. Oh my goodness. I can really smell all those <laughs> ingredients. They just wafted up at me. I love adding fresh lemon to my baking. There's just something about that fresh aroma I absolutely love. That looks perfect. Do you want to throw that in here? There's nothing like the freshness of lemon zest. Let's give it another mix. Okay. Now it's time to add our wet ingredients. I've got some butter here that we melted a little bit earlier and some milk, and we're going to mix that together again. And the last thing we need are our dry ingredients. So we're going to add our flour, some baking powder of course, and a pinch of salt. And this is going to introduce lots of air into the batter to give us that beautiful texture. Once that's done, give it one more quick mix. I'm just going to fold in the last few little bits of flour and then we can pour it into our greased and lined loaf tin. What I've done is I've lined this with some baking paper and I've added a bit of spray as well to grease it and we're going to pour the batter in. I'm sure this loaf tin has seen many amazing recipes. <laughs> Absolutely, that's for sure. So just spread that into an even layer. And we're going to pop that in the oven for 45 minutes. We can get started on our lemon syrup just now. How have you incorporated the Middle Eastern theme into the dessert? I've included saffron in this particular recipe. Usually the saffron is infused in water, but what I've done is I've added it to the lemon syrup and it's actually going to be on top of the loaf when you see it. It's absolutely delicious. Teresa, my heart just skipped a beat. Let's get started on the syrup. I've got some cardamom pods here and what I'm going to do is just grind them just a little bit, not too much, to open them up so that that flavor can come out into the syrup. I'm going to add some caster sugar to the pot. We've got some water, some fresh lemon juice, and our saffron, of course, and the cardamom that we crushed earlier. I don't suppose you have any lemon rind left from oh. earlier. 
Oh, but I can quickly get you some. There you go. That's perfect, thank you. I'm going to add about half a teaspoon. Give that a stir until all the sugar has dissolved and then let it simmer. Our lemon syrup is ready. I think it's time to get the cake out of the oven. Look at that perfect golden top. Now we want to get the syrup on while the cake is hot. Don't forget to take the cardamom pods out of the syrup before you pour it over the cake. That would be a nightmare. Pour the syrup all over the cake and then let it cool before you slice it. I don't know if I can wait. Well, let's plate everything else while we wait for it to cool. This is going to be delicious. Some fresh lemon juice, some parsley. I can't wait to dig in. I want to try everything. Let's go for it. <laughs> How do you do this? Dip your pita bread into the olive oil and then into the dukkah. These spices transport you immediately to the Middle East. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for spoiling me. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. I cannot wait to be spoiled again. <laughs>